Just like the Prince, and thank you very much. I'm sure Tim and I really appreciate to be part of the Order of San Martino in Rome. Um, if the Prince would be so um, gracious to please present our two artist awards. The first award goes to Miss Claudia Hecht. Claudia's work, known Claudia for many years, She's an international artist. She is good at carving, painting. She can do commissions for large buildings. She's a real talent. And because of her international status, I'd like to award at the Prince Award to Claudia. I have been lucky to meet a lot of artists, uh, but uh, every artist uh, has to have the space for show their art. In this case, we have two artists that tonight have the opportunity to show their great art, who will make us thinking. So as a patron of the art, as my ancestors were, please. Thank you very much. You. Uh, for this very important distinguished for me, I'm a Catholic. Uh, I was raised uh, in Mexico. Um, basically, all my education uh, was in a Catholic school and I started painting when I was uh, it was about 25 years ago when I started and it's been a beautiful experience for me uh, working in the art because it's the, like I feel it's like the expression of the soul and for me to paint or do a sculpture uh, I have one piece that couldn't make it for tonight but uh, for me it's like the expression of whatever is inside your heart and your, in, and your feelings in that moment. And I'm very pleased and proud to be here tonight with all of you. Thank you very much. Our other national award for the arts is Louise Peralta. Louise, would you come up? I would love to thank you for your work, your time, and to give to us uh, such a great uh, uh, I would love that you explain, as you explained to me before, in two seconds, the meaning of your painting, because uh, it's very important to have from the artist uh, the way he presents to us so we can see after with our eyes, but it's important. So please. Thank, thank you. you. Good evening, everyone. And first of all, I want to thank everyone for being here today. Uh, you could be anywhere, but you decided to come and celebrate the National Museum of Catholic Art and History. Uh, before, I want to also thank um, Christina for the work that she's doing. I met her, I think, in 2007, and I can truly say that ever since I met her, I don't think she's ever taken a break. And I do also agree with the prince that women are smarter than men. So uh, saying that, um, I started doing art at the age of 13, um, started doing graffiti in the streets of DC, and I never really knew, or I didn't grow up in a Catholic family, I didn't grow up going to church, but something in me always led me to create religious works of art even when I didn't do, know much about God. Uh, and the journey has been great. Um, the three paintings that we have here today are what I call uh, the church in action because I don't really like to do traditional portraits where you see usually the, uh, the Pope or the religious figures uh, standing or sitting with their arms crossed, but instead I like to see them moving. And I grew up learning about John Paul II II. I say that done, I just wanna thank everybody for being here. It's a great honor for us, for me to be here. And I think that art, um, you know, if you listen to the news, they wanna eliminate the 10 commandments from different buildings. They wanna eliminate it from the schools. Sometimes they don't allow prayers in school. But art is one of the things that can take any set group of people and bring them together. And sometimes we may not agree on everything and all the, all the theological things, but one thing that we can agree on is that art can definitely bring people together and that God uses us as teaching tools. So thank you all for everything, and thank you, Christina and the board. So the next person I would like to introduce is Dr. John Amory, who is the CEO of CSIS, one of the biggest think tanks in Washington. They just moved into a beautiful building in Rhode Island. And, um, he has some very interesting uh, lectures there, which um, I, I tell, urge all of you to 
to come and uh, meet John, and he'd like to introduce the last uh, honorees. Good evening, everyone. And uh, Ambassador, thank you for making available this spectacular space. Uh, it's the power of the embassy is uh, everywhere, and we, are, we thank you for that. My, my role tonight is to introduce to you uh, Bill Swanson. Bill is the recipient of the Lifetime Achievement Award. I don't need to recount his resume. It's, it's available to you. It's in this program. My role is to give you maybe just one insight into the character of this man. Uh, Bill is, uh, he has the, the, the mind uh, of an engineer, but he's got the soul of an artist. Um, Bill started at Raytheon at the bottom uh, and worked his way up. This is unusual in corporate America. And, and there were setbacks along the way. But it was his character, his perseverance, and his genuine leadership qualities that brought him to the top. But Bill is also an artist, and his artistry is in food. Bill is a, is a gourmet chef, cook. You wouldn't think that of the CEO. Uh, but it, it, again, it's that, that deep, spirit that's inside of him that I think resonates and has made him such an effective leader in the defense community where we've known each other for 20 years. He's well known for being the author of uh, a little guide, 33 things to do to be a good leader. And one of them stands out. And that's when he talks, it's about the waiter principle. And he says, the judge of a person's character is how they treat the waiter, how they treat the support staff. And he said, any person who is generous and kind to you, but is cold and abusive to a waiter, is not a good man. And I think it's a, it's a sense and an insight into this man. And it's why you've chosen to recognize him tonight with this Lifetime Achievement Award. Would you, with your applause, please welcome this remarkable leader, Bill Swanson. Thank you, John, for those kind words, and thank you, everyone. I'm pleased to accept this award on behalf of my 63,000 teammates uh, across the country. I'd also like to thank the National Museum of Catholic Art and Library and its Board of Trustees for this great honor. I'd also like to thank our hosts for organizing tonight's celebration, the Italian Ambassador and his wife, and the Gala Chairman, Mayor Gray, and Chairman uh, Christina Cox. I'd also like to congratulate tonight's honorees, Archbishop Rolio, Ambassador Flynn, Tramil Crow, and Prince Lorenzo Domici. Uh, you really it, this is really a thrill for me, and I especially want to thank uh, Secretary Kendall, who I have the privilege of, of working with, and to be in the same category with all of you is a thrill. The, the one thing I should mention, there's a little bit of a Boston connection here. The Archbishop went to, went to Boston College. Of course, we have Mayor Flynn, and we have Secretary Kendall, who was with me in Boston, so there are four of us. And Prince, you're welcome to come anytime you want to be part of this very select group. Uh, this is a special award for me, and I just wish all the priests and nuns at St. Mary's uh, Grammar School could uh, be here this evening and kind of realize what they kind of created, uh, even though they probably wouldn't believe it if they were here. Uh, this recognition is so humbling. You see, I always thought growing up in, as a young man in the central coast of, of California, that uh, uh, things like this wouldn't happen. Yet through my education, my strong values that were passed down from my family and my church, I've been so very fortunate in my life and in my career. Um, as John mentioned, I joined Raytheon right out of college with an engineering degree and rose from the factory floor to the corner office. And as I like to tell individuals, I say, only in America. 
This has given me an opportunity to meet leaders in countless fields from around the world, like all of you here this evening, who are the best at what you do. And since we're in the Italian Embassy, I have to mention that there's one place that my wife Cheryl and I like to go, and that's Italy. Uh, Cheryl, for the art, the culture, and the food. For me, being an engineer, I prefer Marinello. If you know about cars, you'll know what I mean. So in closing, it's really a great honor to be recognized with this prestigious award, and it's, it's a privilege to play a part in helping make this new museum promoting art and supporting artists a reality. Thank you all, and God bless. Uh, say a few words to introduce to you Frank Kendall. Frank is the recipient this year for the Leadership Award. Um, we first worked together. Uh, I, I was the Deputy Secretary of Defense at the time. Frank was in charge of acquisition for the Army. And uh, we got to know each other then, but I didn't really know Frank Kendall then. Uh, I left and went to this think tank. Frank uh, left and went to law school. And I'll tell you a bit about that in just a second. Frank is the uh, undersecretary uh, for acquisition. There are five undersecretaries in the Defense Department. There's an undersecretary for ideas, policy, sec undersecretary for money, an undersecretary for people, an undersecretary for secrets, and an undersecretary for things. And Frank is the undersecretary for things. He buys things. And he, so he's got this enormous role in the department to ensure that we buy what is needed so that our personnel can carry out their missions, carry out those missions successfully. He's doing a splendid job. This is remarkable. And, you know, we began the evening with a blessing of the Pieta. I think it would be valuable to just take a minute to reflect on the words that were written in the 25th chapter of Matthew. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was in prison, and you came to me. His disciples said, Lord, when, when did we feed you when you were hungry? When did we give you something to drink when you were thirsty? When did we clothe you? When did we visit you? And Jesus said, when you did this, these things for the least of our brothers and sisters, you did them for me. Frank chose to be a pro bono lawyer so that he could serve the most vulnerable and weak people in the world. And I think we should, with our applause, thank him for that. Thank you. Uh, this is something that I heard John say in a speech about 25 years ago. And it connects, in a way, the art side of what I just talked about, that memory, to what I do today, uh, what I'm going to continue to be doing. John told the story as the Soviet Union was beginning to disintegrate. And he told about, uh, and I'm going to get this perhaps not exactly accurate, but it'll be very close. He told a story about a group of people who were allowed, as the borders were opening up, to leave one of the Iron Curtain, behind the Iron Curtain, move, move to the west. And I think this, this family came out of Hungary on a train, one of the earliest trains, if you remember about that. There was sort of a breakthrough, and a train started to move, and people were able to move across the borders more freely. The train came, I think, to uh, Vienna and Austria. And they were pressed there, of course, to meet people as they got off the train. And in the way that the press likes to do, somebody came up and put a microphone in front of you know, this little family, uh, a man, a woman, and some children, in the face of the, of the family and said, tell us how you feel. Uh, and they kind of looked back in shock. And then the woman gathered herself and she said, there is something I want to say. I'll get choked up when I say this, I'm sorry. But there's something I want to say to the people in America. And this is equally true for Italian friends and all of our NATO members. I want to say to the people in America, Thank you for keeping a place free for us. If, if, people are going, if people are going to be free to start institutions like the Museum of Catholic Art and Library, 
and people are going to be free to enjoy all the freedoms that we have today, that work is not quite done. As recent events show, there are plenty of people around the world who do not enjoy our freedom. So I'm very honored tonight, Christina, uh, Ambassador, uh, to be honored by this award. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Well, I want to thank everybody um, for listening to all the speeches. These wonderful honorees, especially our host, the Ambassador, uh, and his wife. And um, dessert is coming. I want everyone to meet and greet, have coffee, have more wine. It's time to enjoy the rest of the evening. Um, Tim? Oh, we want to thank the staff, right? Thank, thank you to all the staff for all the hard work you've done and everybody that worked on the event tonight. Thank you very much. A round of applause for everybody yes. that did it. All and, the people. Thank you so much. And, and